Welcome to Gospel of Deliverance. I'm Pastor Steve Williams. Thank you for joining me today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for another glorious day, a wonderful time, Lord Jesus, to be with you and to be with each other, to share fellowship in your presence. Lord God, anoint us for the hearing of your word. Anoint our hearts that we will receive deeply and truly of your understanding of your wisdom. God, today we want your will. We want to feel your presence in our lives. And Lord God, we pray today that truly we will be changed, fresh and new, in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. God is wonderful. God is glorious. That's the title of today's text. God's ways and His nature are wonderful and glorious, and there is not a single attribute of our Savior which should not be referred to as wonderful and glorious. Today, I want to spend our time that we have together exploring the wonder and glory of the majesty of God our King. And we're going to begin in Psalm chapter 40, verse 5, the 40th Psalm, verse 5. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Reading from the pulpit commentary on this verse, it says, it is not only for his recent deliverance that the psalmist owes thanks and gratitude to God. God's mercies in the past have been countless and have laid him under unspeakable obligations. And thy thoughts, which are to usward, God's thoughtfulness for man, his consideration and providential care deserve praise and thanks equally with his wondrous acts. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. They are so numerous that it is impossible to reckon them up. Many of them, moreover, are secret and escape our notice. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Words, therefore, are insufficient, and some better return than mere words must be found. Oh, hallelujah to God. Friends, we are serving an omnipotent Savior. And our words surely fail to recognize and to demonstrate His vast glory, His wonderfulness. We've got to find a way, and it, that way has to be the sacrifice of our life. It must be that we give ourselves wholly to Him, because anything less just isn't beginning to be enough. We can never succeed in praising the Lord enough. Yet, that must be our attempt. That must be our life's goal. Our life's purpose must be to praise the Savior. To be in awe of His wonder. Awe of His glory. Psalm 107 and verse 8. Psalm 107 and verse 8, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. See, we need to learn to praise God for His manifold mercies, to praise Him for His grace, which influences us. And we need to ever praise Jehovah for His plenteous manifestations of His love toward us lifting his precious name before the congregation and definitely before sinful man, never stopping our flow of praise for he who alone is wonderful and glorious. No one deserves praise as he. He alone is wonderful. He alone is glorious. He is our Savior. And friend, we could spend every waking breath and we could dream all night long about praising Him, and it would still not be enough. 
So let us enter into a state of praise. Let our hearts be consistent. Let us not sap the praise from Him, being distracted by the things of the world, the pursuits of the world, the pleasures of the world, and the necessities of the world. Let them not dissuade us from praising our Savior. Psalm 119, 129. Psalm 119 and verse 129. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore doth my soul keep them. C.H. Spurgeon in his Treasury of David wrote, full of wonderful revelations, commands and promises, wonderful in their nature, as being free from all error, and bearing within themselves overwhelming self-evidence of their truth, wonderful in their effects as instructing, elevating, strengthening, and comforting the soul. Jesus, the eternal word, is called wonderful, and all the uttered words of God are wonderful in their degree. Those who know them best wonder at them most. It is wonderful that God should have borne testimony at all to sinful men, and more wonderful still, that His testimony should be of such a character, so clear, so full, so gracious, so mighty. So said C.H. Spurgeon. Hallelujah. He is everything to us. He's wonderful. He's glorious. You have reason today to praise His holy name. We have reason to be in awe of Him. Sometimes we look at nature, what God has created, and we think about how beautiful it is, and we say that we stand in awe of it, but friends, truly, we may not even stand before God. He is so awesome. He is so awe-inspiring. We need to focus our attention, bow before Him daily, present ourselves a living sacrifice, because He is great beyond measure, great beyond our thoughts. We can't even imagine it takes the Word of God to articulate for us who He is. We return to the Word of God to describe Him, because we are unable to. If it were not for what He had written of Himself, we would not know how. We would not know when and how to give glory to Him, let alone for that glory to be effective if He had not written it down. And here's the reason why. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 and in verse 6. For to us a child is born, a son will be given to us, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, My Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. There's the reason why the burden to praise the Lord is so heavy. Why the desire needs to be so strong in us to praise Him? Because He is an everlasting Father. Alexander McLaren said the hopes of Israel did not and those of the world do not rest on tendencies, principles, laws of progress, advance of civilization, or the like abstractions or impersonalities, but on a living person in whom all principles which make for righteousness and blessedness for individuals and communities are incarnated and whose vital action works perpetually in mankind. Jesus purposes wonders in the depths of His redeeming design. He intends to do great things and to reach them by a road which none would have imagined. McLaren continued, The counsel to save a world and that by dying for it is the miracle of miracles. Who hath been His counselor in what overwhelming wonder? He needs no teacher. He is himself the teacher of all truth. All may have his direction, and they who follow it will not walk in darkness. He is the Father of Eternity, a name in which tender care and immortal life are marvelously blended. 
This king will be in reality what in old days monarchs often called themselves and seldom were, the father of his people, with all the attributes of that sacred name. McLaren said such as guidance, love, providing for his children's wants, nor can Christians forget that Jesus is the source of life to them and that the name has thus a deeper meaning. Father, he is possessed of eternity. Dying men need and have an undying Christ. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but it stirs in me praise. It stirs in me a great and mighty satisfaction. A satisfaction that I made the right decision. Oh, those many years ago, when I knelt down and asked Christ to forgive me of my sin. Not just of transgressions, personal, but of that great and mighty sin of rebellion that is birthed in every human being, that of Adam. Oh, what decision I made by the leadership of the Holy Ghost, His calling, His conviction. And I am so happy I followed it, and I pray that you are too, and not a day goes by that you do not remember that time. That not a day goes by that you do not thank Him, that you bowed down before Him. Friends, He's wonderful. He's glorious. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 25 and 1. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and true. Thank you, Lord, for being true. Faithful, true. Glory to God. Think about that verse. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels are of old, are faithfulness and true. John Wesley said the prophet reflecting upon those great and glorious prophecies which he had delivered, interrupts the course of his prophecies and breaks forth into a solemn celebration of God's wonderful works. Thy counsels from which all thy works proceed and which thou hast from time to time revealed to thy prophets and people which were of old being conceived from all eternity are true and firm and shall certainly be accomplished. Friends, we need to remember that what God is instructing us today by his word, what is written in his holy Bible is not new. Nor was it new at the time, but instead his promises, his word, his prophecies were of old. They were from all eternity. I'm not the first one to say that, but many ministers before have recognized that his word is eternal. It was not just written down on the spur of the moment. Men did not just think it up. They didn't just grapple with the thoughts of what they felt and wrote them down. But instead, they were the prophetic word of God. They were the injunctions of Christ from all eternity past. We should praise Him if for nothing else but that. We wouldn't need to spend any time more than just praising Him for His word. Praising Him for His word, which brings salvation to us. Praising Him for His word, which details who He is, and how we should praise Him. Psalm 111, verse 3, Psalm 111 and 3 says, His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness endureth forever. His work is honorable, it's full of honor, it is glorious, and His righteousness endureth forever. The Cambridge Bible notes said, His works are a revelation of those attributes of royal dignity with which he clothes himself. And at the same time, they are the outcome of his eternal righteousness. With him there is no divorce 
between might and right. Oh, how true. Friends, we see it every day. We see someone get might and the right leaves. We see someone that is right, but they do not have the might. With God, there is no separation between right and might. His might is ever-present, and His right never leaves. Glory to the Lord Most High. Friends, we have a reason to praise Him today. We have a reason to get out of the muck and mire of life. We have a purpose to leave behind the human bickering. We have a reason to leave behind the worldly concerns and pursuits and the worldly desires and to focus all our attention on Jesus. Every bit of energy that we can muster, do your work that God has called you to do, to provide for your family. Beyond that, don't extend any more energy than you absolutely have to because the rest needs to be put toward our praise of God. Our love toward Him, our professing His Word, our living for Him should consume nearly all of our energies. If you find yourself stumbling, if you find yourself maybe taking a step off the path, if you find yourself weary and well-doing, then it's time to redouble our efforts so that we can truly say we are a living sacrifice before God. Hallelujah. Psalm 145 and 5. The 145th Psalm, verse 5. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. Reading from Matthew Henry's commentary, he said the consideration of this should strike an awe upon us in all our approaches to God, the power of it. When they speak of the glory of God's kingdom, they must talk of His power, the extent of it, the efficacy of it, His power by which he can do anything and does everything he pleases. Mm, hallelujah. He does as he pleases and he does anything that he wants to do. He can do anything and he does exactly as he pleases. None can stop him. Why do we worry, friends, about what the world can do to us? Why do we concern ourselves with the attacks of Satan and what he can do? Why are we worried about individuals that may try to harm us or hurt us? When? What? His power? He can do anything and does everything he pleases? Why should we be worried? For our Lord is unstoppable. He is a force that cannot be reckoned with, cannot be dealt with. Nothing can slow him down. Hallelujah, friend. And we are a child of the King of the universe. Therefore, we can rest assured in his presence that all will be well, regardless of how things look. And we will end up praising him for his gloriousness for His wonderfulness, hallelujah, it makes me want to get up out of this chair and dance. Just dance before the Lord because His glory is so marvelous. His majesty, so profound. His wonder, so deep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Will you praise Him today? Give Him honor and glory. Take some time even after this service. As you have so attentively watched and listened, take time and praise His name. Set aside some time and give God the glory due to His name. Psalm 145 and 12. 145th Psalm, verse 12. To make known to the sons of men His mighty acts and the glorious majesty of His kingdom. To make known to the sons of men. Let's make it known. 
to everyone we meet, every believer, every sinner, that we know who God is, His glorious majesty. See, few today consider the knowledge of God's works as essential to life. That's why it's important for us to remember God every single day, to speak of Him every single day. This spiritual education has been left off not only by the world, but by many in the church and by many churches. Spiritual training is vital to our human existence, and the only place to find that instruction is the Bible. No other place or thing can provide what is needed. Only God's Word is able to inculcate an understanding of the eternal, majestic, wonderful, glorious person of Yeshua, our Messiah God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pause and think about that, friends. The Bible's the only place that we can truly learn of Messiah, our Savior, our Lord, our King. Yes, we have a spiritual relationship with Jesus. But where we learn to praise Him, where we learn to praise Him is in His Word. And we lift Him up in spirit. We give Him glory in the Spirit. We've been trained by His Word in the Spirit. For His Word is Spirit. It's alive. Never doubt that God's Word is living. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. It is living Word. Just like Jesus is the living Word. And friends, we serve that risen Savior. We serve the living God, and His Word lives still today, and it is alive, and when we put it into action, when we praise His name, we are in the power of God. We are in the midst of His spiritual strength. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 21 and 5. Psalm 21 and 5, His glory is great in thy salvation, honor and majesty hast thou laid up on Him. Mm. Let's read that again. His glory is great in thy salvation, honor and majesty hast thou laid upon Him. John Gill wrote, That which his Father has put upon Him, and lies in the introduction of Him into His glory, after His sufferings and death and resurrection from the dead, and exalting Him at His right hand above all creatures and things, and giving Him all power in heaven and in earth, in putting all the gifts of the Spirit into His hands, which He receiving gave to men, and in ordaining Him judge of quick. Oh, we serve the judge of the universe. We serve the advocate of every believer. We serve a risen Savior. As I say it again, and it cannot be said too many times, we serve the risen Savior. He alone is worthy of praise. He alone is worthy of our attention. If our attention is bifurcated, if it is upon three things or more, if it is upon something other than Him, we have replaced our attention on Christ to our attention on something of the world. We are missing out, and we are not. I repeat, we are not doing as the Bible has told us to do. We are not fulfilling our commitment to Christ if our attention is someplace else. Let us ever keep our attention on Him, that when He calls, that we answer as an attentive child, not one that does not hear, 
Let us not be as I was when I was a child. We were down in Alabama, and my father was at a church preaching a revival. My mother was ill, and so my father let me out to play, and he said, stay close. I don't want you to go beyond the yard. Beyond that was a beautiful small forest, and I, of course, got distracted and went into the woods. Started playing and went to a little stream and just got lost in my joy. And then all of a sudden, I heard my father's voice way in the distance. Way in the distance, I heard him. I turned and began to go back. And then when I broke the last line of trees, I saw him on the porch. And he took his finger and brought it down beside him, and he said, Stephen, come here. Friends, let us not be inattentive. Let us not be drawn away by even what is beautiful upon this earth, even what brings clean joy to us. Let us not be inattentive to the call of our Savior, to his voice, to the multitude of counselors of his word. Let us ever be in his presence. Our final verse for today is Psalm 96 and 6. Again, Psalm 96, verse 6. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. So says Psalm 96 and 6. C.H. Spurgeon said that men can but mimic these things. Their pompous pageants are but the pretense of greatness. Honor and majesty are with him and with him alone in the presence of Jehovah. Real glory and sovereignty abide as constant attendance. In him are combined all that is mighty and lovely, powerful and resplendent, we have seen rugged strength devoid of beauty. We have also seen elegance without strength. The union of the two is greatly to be admired. Do we desire to see the sublime and beautiful at one glance? Then we must look to the eternal throne. If we want to see what's most beautiful, what's most sublime, what's most glorious, what's most wonderful, let's look to the throne of Almighty God. Not to man. Man is weak. Man is so weak. Friends, we have a Savior that is worthy of more praise than we are able to give in a lifetime. Yet it, that is what we are called to do is to spend a lifetime of giving Him glory and giving Him praise and all of these verses that we have read have instructed us toward that. They have revealed it toward us. It's not just about who we are, it's about who He is and how we respond to Him. And we can go through all of the laws of God and say, yes, I'm doing this, going through the checklist, I'm making sure I'm living a good life for Christ. I'm using the fruit of the Spirit, all of it. I'm obeying my Master. But if we're not praising Him, if we're not giving Him glory, if we're not showing adoration toward Him openly before man and the congregation, then we are falling down on the job. Truly, we are being insufficient with our duties to Him. Imagine, if you will, that all of this was wrapped up in a job description. That's really what it is, because we become a priest of God. And that retains a job description. And in that description, not only do we have to follow all of those duties, and take care of the worship, 
and the praise, we must take care of every small thing and every large thing. It is not only the sacrifice, it's the worship and praise. It's not only the giving instruction or receiving instruction, it is the worship and praise. It is attending to His Word, the reading of His Word, and it is worship and praise. All of the job description of priest, all that makes us His child, we must attend to. It must be part of our lives. We must not be weak in an area. We must be strong in all. We must be strong in all that we do for Him in every aspect. Let us constantly seek for any weaknesses in our armor. Let us constantly look for areas where we need improvement and let us for sure always be about praising His name and thanking Him for His salvation. Thank you, Lord. I don't know what your need is today, but I do know this, that we all need more power, more strength, more fortitude, more desire to praise the name of our Savior. So let's make that a priority because you know what? As we pray for those things in our lives, then we'll witness better. We will take the Word of God out and spread it better because of all of who He is. And now we recognize more efficiently who He is because we have laid ourselves on the line. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, glorious God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that once again you have graced us with your presence and that you are enlivening us even now and that as we go forth and we stand with your word and we praise your name openly, Lord God, that we will see the fruits of our labor. We will see hearts touched, minds freed, spirits rejoicing, all because, all because of you. We give you honor and glory and praise for your miracle working power today in everyone, our friends, our enemies, those that are members at our church, the Bible study, the prayer group. Lord God, all of those that have listened to this sermon today, we thank you. We praise you for what you've done, for your healing grace. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being with me today. And I just pray that you have a great day in Christ with your family, with your friends, your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let's give Him glory. Okay? Goodbye. God bless.